Welcome to Member Spotlight, presented by the Community Broadband Action Network, or CBAN. As a membership organization, we at CBAN feel it's really important to support our members by sharing their stories throughout our little community. And the topic today of our Member Spotlight is provider member Liberty Communications, based in Iowa. And I'm excited to have Justin uh, Stinson, Liberty Communications CEO, as my guest. Justin, great to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. You bet. My pleasure. Well, you guys are doing some cool things. You've been doing cool things for a very long time. Uh, and so I wanted to maybe just start out with just give us a little background on Liberty Communications and your history. Yeah, Liberty started out as just a traditional ILEC telephone company, uh, West Liberty Telephone Company, and um, started back in 1898. Uh, so really early in the days and then has been in the same family since 1907. Um, and so over the course of multiple generations, they've continued to grow within this area. Back in the 80s, uh, they purchased uh, West Branch uh, Exchange and started to expand that area. And as both of these communities, West Liberty and West Branch, continue to grow, uh, we continue to, to expand our network out to reach all of them. Um, and then, you know, I, I joined the company uh, about two and a half, almost three years ago now, and with an eye on growth um, and amazing support from the board. So at that point, we started to look at ver various ways that we could grow as a company through acquisition, through commercial sales, through uh, building out our existing network. So it's been quite the journey and lots of fun. We've got big plans. Yeah, let's talk about some of those big plans. We'll start with something that you recently announced is that you've completely rebuilt your um, entire network to all fiber to the home and, and your final vestiges of DSL are now gone. So talk about that. Yeah, that's something we're really excited about. You know, it's been about 14 years in the making uh, since we started the very first fiber build. And so it's been a long process and it's you know it's a very expensive process when you're looking at overbuilding existing network that already has customers on it you know the the business case isn't always that easy because you're not realizing new revenue uh you're just really upgrading that network and so it's been uh, a really great process and by going at the speed we've been on this one we've really been able to build it to the level and standards that we would expect. So it's really one of the best networks I've ever seen. And I've been in the industry for about 20 years. And so it's really fascinating to, to look at it and uh, continue to grow. So now we've reached every one of the uh, possible addresses within our exchange areas in both West Liberty and West Branch. And so now, you know, we're, we're starting to creep outside of those, those exchange areas and reach even more customers. And, uh, you know, technology, you're, the technology you're deploying there, uh, obviously you're doing gigabit fiber capabilities mm -hmm. here, but is it GPON, XGS PON, mixture? Yeah, it's a, it's a GPON right now. And uh, we're putting in a lot of upgrades uh, to be able to offer an XGS PON very, very soon, um, which will then allow all of our customers to reach uh, even technically up to 10 gigabits per Per location. So we're still a little ways out from that. There's a lot of back end work that kind of goes into that and some equipment upgrades and things like that. But always having an eye on the future and, you know, creating the best possible experience for our customers is kind of what we're, we're really focused on. And so we want to make sure that we do it right and have it ready to go when it's time. Well, in addition to doing great things to rebuild your existing plant, uh, you mentioned your growth that you guys have been experiencing. And one of those was the acquisition of Natel uh, down in Southeast Iowa. Talk about that. Uh, what was kind of the strategy behind that acquisition? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, a lot of times in the ILEC world, it's, it's really tough to uh, get your mind around being able to grow uh, outside of your existing area or with neighboring uh, neighboring areas. And uh, we saw an opportunity with Natel that, you know, they've got a presence in three larger markets. And so we saw it really as a growth opportunity. It puts us in a great position to expand a, a fixed wireless setting so that we can reach a lot of the rural customers that are outside of the fiber network. 
that allows us to build fiber into some of these communities that are fiber starved and just reach a, a large number of customers that we, we feel like we can really impact their lives. And we see it as, as a, uh, just a long-term growth, growth uh, plan for us. Now, are you uh, under doing um, any upgrades, uh, expansions of, of the former Natel property? Yeah, we're actually doing a lot. Um, so between uh, building in redundancies between the multiple markets that we see, bringing in additional bandwidth in order to support uh, higher, higher customer growth, we're uh, upgrading the power plant, we're upgrading a lot of the equipment, uh, both in our central office, as well as uh, some of the stuff that actually goes in customers' homes. Uh, in addition, uh, we're expanding our fixed wireless uh, network uh, with next-gen technology that'll get near fiber speeds uh, for you know a majority of the customers that are within reach of those towers. So there's a lot of work going on. Well, it's always good to hear when um, someone is uh, a company uh, is is doing all they can for those very rural people because it's a really hard business case to make for fiber and but the fixed wireless technology has advanced quite a bit just in the past few years so hopefully that'll really uh, allow you to fill some of those gaps in yeah and especially some some of the areas down in southeast iowa even with fixed wireless and in, in the past and the previous technology it's really been tough to reach them and so you know some of the new technology coming out allows you to to reach with um, less than perfect line of sight and so we see that as a great opportunity to reach some of those hard to reach customers without spending a fortune on building fiber down a down a dirt road um, you know like you mentioned the, the business case is really difficult in those situations so if we can reach them and still give them you know a really great connection and uh, a great experience from top to bottom we see that as a great win well, in addition to the Natel acquisition and your rebuilding in your own uh, current service area, you guys have also been participants in the Iowa Broadband Grant Program. And uh, talk a little bit about how that has helped fill in some gaps uh, around uh, rural Iowa. Yeah, actually, uh, especially within the last couple of um, uh, NOFA, we call them NOFA grants or Notice of Funding Availability, um, you know, we've we've had some good success both on the Liberty side as well as our our Natel acquisition. So, um, our Natel acquisition, they had just won some of that grant money in order to help build out this next gen technology on the fixed wireless side, and so that's a really exciting and helping us accelerate that build even faster. On the Liberty side, it's it's allowed us to pick up some of the areas that were even more difficult to reach because. Uh, the, there were identified census blocks that were difficult to reach and didn't have good connectivity. And so we were able to reach out and uh, access those. And then coming up, um, you know, end of last year, we were, we were uh, awarded uh, our NOFA 8 grant, which is going to cover kind of the northeast side of West Branch and kind of um, Highway 1 and things like that. So we see that's already an area that we're very familiar with, and it's an area that is very fiber starved. Uh, we've looked at that area for a, a pretty good period of time. And so this just helps us, you know, make that that business case uh, to build in there even, even stronger. Question for you about us being a small company, a leader of a, of a, sm a smaller company, although obviously getting bigger and growing. Um, how do you what what do you do to keep track and keep uh, up to date on the latest in technology? Uh, you know, do you are you the technologist of Liberty Communications, the <laughs> guy who's always looking around for what's next and what's better? I, I I would say I'm probably more of the idea guy. Uh, I have a pretty good idea of where I want to go and what we want to accomplish for our customers, uh, but I would not say that I'm the I'm the technology guy by any means. Uh, I've got some really smart people that work with me and they're the ones that can really dig in and look at all of the opportunities. So, you know, it's it's really important, you know, as we, as we look at where we want the customer, the company to go and the customers that we're serving and where we wanna reach, 
You know, there, there's a number of things we have to take into account. Uh, some of that is, hey, what are the speed requirements, the bandwidth requirements? How are our customers using it? What do they want to accomplish? Um, what are the security risks that go along with it in our world today? You know, that is such a high priority and everything that we do is how do we protect not only our network, but our customers' uh, information as well. We see on the news all the time, all these cybersecurity attacks. And so we take that really seriously and we put a lot of, um, a lot of pieces in place in order to protect all of that. So we may not be first to, first to market with it. And it's typically because we're making sure that we have it all protected and you know we're in a good space and we're not gonna have to go back and and repair things or our reputation or anything like that. So there's a difference between being on the cutting edge and the bleeding edge. Yep. Yep. And nobody wants to see themselves bleed, especially when it's something that could impact your customers. Absolutely. Um, and and you guys are really focused on the customer experience and, and keeping your customers happy. You know, what talk a little bit about your approach. How do you work to keep getting better? Yeah, you know. It's really important, uh, especially being a smaller company in a, in a lot of these communities where we've been a staple for over 100 years. And, you know, people know us, they have worked with us, worked alongside of us, all of the all of this. And as we grow, I think it's really easy to for kind of forget where you came from. And, you know, you see a lot of companies where the customers are just a number. And so one thing that we're doing uh, is really focusing on our customers' whys and what are they wanting to accomplish? What are their dreams and goals? Because our services are designed to help people reach their, their goals and dreams. And so, you know, if a customer wants to start a new business, if a kid wants to grow up to be an astronaut, if uh, they're trying to stay in touch with, you know, military personnel on the, uh, across the seas, you know, all of this, these dreams and, you know, important life events all rely on a reliable broadband connection. And so, you know, one thing we're doing is actually reaching out to uh, members of the community. It doesn't even necessarily have to be a Liberty Communications customer because we really want to understand and make it personal on who people are, what they want to accomplish and how we can help them get there. And so not just in the Liberty uh, West Liberty West Branch market. We're also doing in that in our new acquisition markets. So uh, it doesn't have to be anywhere. We just want to understand customers and really what their dreams and goals, because uh, that's something we're, we'll put in our offices and it keep it helps us keep it top of mind on literally every action that we take, every decision we make is how are we helping these people achieve their dreams. So other than providing great um, broadband service to the communities you serve, what are some other ways that uh, Liberty Communications is uh, becomes involved in your communities? Yeah, we sit on a number of boards within our uh, communities. Uh, so we have a lot of involvement with nonprofits, uh, economic development groups. Um, we do a lot of sponsorships and work very closely with the schools in each one of our markets and look for opportunities to enhance that um, with seniors within the West Liberty and West Branch school districts. We offer a scholarship um, for one scholarship for each one of those schools in order to help them advance their education and achieve their dreams. Um, and so, you know, we tend to be just about everywhere something is going on. And that's really just to stay connected and, you know, help wherever we can. So what are some of the challenges that 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 you see for Liberty Communications? I'm sure you have probably some challenges that are common across the industry, but as you shine up the crystal ball and look into the next few years, what are some of the challenges that you'll have to overcome? Yeah, you know, I mentioned uh, security is, is definitely a big one and that's going to continue to be a really big one, especially as new technologies come out, such as AI. I see AI is really being, uh, a big impact to our industry. I don't think we really fully understand how big it could be. Uh, we've essentially scratched the surface with like chat GPT and some of the technologies in that space that exist today. 
But I think the amount of bandwidth that's going to be needed and the security risks that kind of come along with that, I think that's going to create a, a really challenging environment. The other piece is probably from a competitive standpoint, understanding, you know, there's there's not the borders that used to exist. You know, back in the day, there used to be like, oh, I won't go into your space and you won't come into my space. Well, with all of this this funding and growth of all these different companies and you know acquisitions and mergers and all this different stuff, you know, it's really created a, a competitive environment that doesn't look like what it did even five years ago. And so I think that's really great for the consumer because it gives them choices. It pushes each one of the providers to, to really make themselves better and challenge themselves to continue to, to improve the networks and the security and everything. So I think it's great for the consumer, uh, but it does obviously create new challenges for the provider side as well. There are a lot of small providers out there, independent providers in Iowa and elsewhere in the country that are, you know, that traditional telephone exchange with maybe at one time 500 phone lines. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of those small companies have done what you've done. You've grown, you've expanded, you've built the business up. There's still some out there that haven't done that. And uh, for various and sundry reasons, any advice mm -hmm. for those little guys out there that, are kind of stuck where they are. Yeah, it's hard to get in that growth mindset. And like I tell my team here all the time, you know, if if growth was easy, everybody would be doing it. But I live kind of by the idea that if you're not growing, you're dying. And I'm not really interested in being the one that dies here. And so, you know, we're going to con continue to look for ways to grow smartly as a company. I think. Uh, Oftentimes, some of these companies will bite off way more than they can chew. And so I think being, you know, fiduciary, um, you know, stewards of how you grow, I think is really important and doesn't put you in too, too big of a hole. But look for creative ways to, to get out there and, you know, get outside your normal space. I think that's really important. Uh, anybody can build a network. It's really hard to maintain a network. And so I think that's some of what a lot of this grant funding will lead to is, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of networks, but not a lot of maintenance of the network. So being able to, to put yourself in a position to manage it correctly for a long time to come and uh, partner with those around you in order to make yourself successful as well. You've probably done what I've done before, Justin, when those grant rounds are announced and you look at the the companies that received funding, it's almost you can go down the list and say, they're going to do well, they're going to do well. I'm not so sure about this one. So you've probably seen a few of those over the years too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, everybody can talk about being a growth-minded company, but you really have to back it with the right mindset, the right culture internally, you know, the right technology, you have to have the right people in place in order to support it. And so, um, yeah, you can kind of go down that list and see who's been successful in the past and who's going to continue to move forward. You know, what's their leadership look like? Are they are they really focused on doing the right thing for the right reason and continue to move it forward? Just growing for a bigger dollar is not worth growing. It's, mm. you know, you're doing it for the wrong reason. So, just like us, you know, since we've started, we've wanted to touch more lives. And so if we expand our network, we get to touch more lives. If we end up making more money, that's a result of doing the right thing for, for the people that we serve. So, you know, that's a great thing, but our, our main focus is going to be our, on our people. And, you know, we, we really don't want to worry too much about other people. Um, I, I just finished reading a book um, by Simon Sinek uh, called The Infinite Game. Yep. And I'd highly recommend it, but really talking about, hey, this is a long term journey and I don't really care about the competition per se. Uh, I'm going to focus on what I'm doing and we have an idea where we want to go. And if they want to compete with us, great. But, you know, there, there's really no winning. We're just going to continue to to provide the best possible solutions down the road. And, you know, it, it ultimately, even from a competitive standpoint with me, you know, we talk about winning in the business world a lot and that there, there technically is no winning. 
there's just going to be another battle yeah. moving forward if you're looking at it that way. So why don't we just focus on our customers and what we're doing for ourselves internally and continue to move forward and the rest will fall into place. Circling back to the Natel uh, acquisition again, um, what was the, what was the process there, or the you know what were the challenges of folding that long existing business into your own? Yeah, I think the biggest challenge was uh, there's just been some different standards. Um, you know, we have very high standards, especially on the on the telco side, and some of that is you know managed through you know, regulation and things like that. But we've, we've got a team of people that uh, have set those expectations for years, even way before me. And so going in and reconnecting or trying to connect a network that is built different um, and they did a really great job of reaching those, those customers. But now we want to go in and next level it and really show what it's capable of doing. And so we're doing a lot of that stuff on the back end uh, a lot out in the field on the physical network. And, you know, I think that's going to, to really show for the customers that are served on those networks what, what it's really capable of doing and become really the most reliable uh, provider they, they could imagine. Well, it is a great philosophy, and it's one that at CBAN we we embrace totally, and that's why we're really excited when you guys decided to become a CBAN um, uh broadband provider member um just just for just for uh, a second here maybe talk about what you think what 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 is uh what does cban mean to you as far as being a member what what is uh what are the benefits you think it brings to you as an organization yeah i think it really has an uh, an advocate side um a real partner in being able to go after a lot of these rural areas uh, it really helps keep a focus and create sort of like this, um, almost like a family atmosphere with other other members in order to communicate and provide feedback on what we're doing and how we're going to continue to do it. So having that advocate in your court can really help move things forward and just takes one less stress off our off our plate when we're really trying to focus on the business. Some of that other stuff outside of the business is really helpful to have somebody partner with and and help us through it great well i appreciate the nice plug there um i got to bring this back up because uh at one point you talked about we want kids in these rural areas to be able to grow up and be astronauts or whatever and it looks like you've got one already um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if that's a real uh liberty communications astronaut or not but it's amazing and your website is, uh, for those of you listening, the Liberty Communications website is just uh, libertycommunications.com. So I would encourage you to visit them and check them out. Obviously, if you're in their area, I encourage you to become their customer because you will love the service that you get from them. And if you're listening to this or watching this and you just want to learn some people who are doing it right for the right reasons, check out libertycommunications.com and uh, learn more. Justin, really a pleasure to have you on today. Appreciate uh, all you do and uh, appreciate you being on our, our spotlight today. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. And we'll maybe run into you at a show or two this coming spring. I'll be there. All right. Our guest today has been Justin Stinson. He's the CEO of Liberty Communications, a C-Ban broadband provider member. And our topic today for Member Spotlight.